finally we have some waves. Hopefully the wind will follow so we can stop this motoring and put up some sails. Hello, my name is Patrick Childress on Brick House, and today I have seven very important sailing tips for the long range cruiser. And certainly number seven is the most valuable. I think even the most experienced cruiser will find some good use in tip number seven. And at the end of this video, I put together some segments on the large wooden sailboats in Madagascar and the tremendous amount of weight that they can carry and about the hard-working men who operate those boats. It's, they have all my admiration in the world for how much work they put in for very little money. And Madagascar is way past the horizon and somewhere way up, up ahead of us, well over the horizon, is Tanzania, Africa and the island of Zanzibar. I love the sound of those names, but first we'll be stopping at the island of Mayat out here in the Mozambique Channel. So right now, let's get to tip number one. When we are hard on the wind, slamming into big waves, slamming into this port light, and also sometimes on the windward side of the boat, those port lights will also have a little drip. And even though I've taken silicone grease and you can also use Vaseline. I've rejuvenated the seal, but we can still get small drips. So in anticipation of extreme weather, now I found it's really best just to take out the screen and install a storm window. This plastic is quarter inch thick, six millimeters, and it's just some smoke plastic that I found in a trash pile at a marina. So it's really easy to take out the screen and put in the storm window. No more leaks. Tip number two, how to keep the water out of the chain pipe for the windlass. It's pretty easy actually. A nice wad of modeling clay will do the trick. You just squeeze it in around the chain and have it overlap the base of the windlass and that'll keep 99% of the water out. The only problem is in very cold weather, the clay will become very stiff. Then small rags will have to do. Tip number three, the hatch on the foredeck, how to help that seal on the inside do its job to keep from big waves slamming up here and water dripping on the inside. And it's called chinking. A little bit of line to help fill in this gap slows down the waves so that the seal can do its job. It just goes around the edge and is tied in the back with a simple knot. This is our four-year-old Chips cat, Lily. We picked her up at the island nation of Pulau when she was just a little kitten. You know how when a line twist is always being put in the line with each coil. But this is pretty much the standard way of doing it and stowing a line. The problem is then when you release a line and it goes through quickly, it's all hung up because the twists are trying to come out faster than they can untwist. So it gets hung up inside of whatever fitting it's going through, in this case a brake. So it's much better to, rather than coil a line, to hand a line. H-A-N-D. Hand. Bring it over and back and over. That way you don't put those twists in the line. When it runs out, they'll run out nice and clean, nice and fair, very quickly, without any snags.
tip number five, catching rainwater. You don't need a big area to catch a lot of rainwater. This bimini, the water runs down to the hard dodger and then downhill into this gutter, which is made from thin wall PVC cut lengthwise and attached to the hard dodger with four screws and some sealant along the top edge. This line just sits in here, has a knot to help hold it in place. And the water runs downhill, all angled aft. And then through surface tension, the water adheres to the rope and runs right into the bucket. Tip number six. It's hard to imagine sitting in a nice calm anchorage like this, big ocean waves that can come over the side of the boat and fill the cockpit with water. Or even smaller waves that can come over the side of the boat and slam into these. These were solid and fixed permanently with twist locks. There could be all kinds of damage. These would have been destroyed long ago. But when big ocean waves come crashing over the side, they just don't cause any damage. They just get us wet on the inside. These side curtains are held in place with just little snaps. They're of an oval shape, so if you want to pull them apart by hand, pull them up from the bottom oval. Not from the sides or the top, but from this bottom oval. And they come right off. It's probably the most important tip of all in this whole video, because it contains hundreds and hundreds of other tips. And this is one very important book that I think every long-range cruising boat should have on board. Offshore Sailing, 200 Essential Passage Making Tips by Bill Seifert. Bill Seifert has been in the boating business most of his life. He's quite the expert. And I don't care who you are, no matter how experienced you are, you read this book, you're going to find something very unique that's going to help you out in any long-range cruising situation. This was edited by Daniel Spur. He actually put all this information into a book format. Daniel Spur was an editor at Cruising World for many years, and then he became the big man at Practical Sailor and ran Practical Sailor for many years. And Spur's Guide to Upgrading Your Cruising Sailboat is another very important book to have on your long-range cruising sailboat, full of expert information. Offshore Sailing and Spur's Guide to Upgrading Your Cruising Boat, two excellent books to always keep on your boat. Here's the part about the wooden ships.
fasa hula taranaka Wana rose maniri mila mchufu kufu kati apina vavaka Amena! Tuko! Mafti! Efa msirkit bedu wanki ya faye Zaba debe ya mnifena na kifaza hula taranaka Wana rose maniri mila mchufu kati apina vavaka Tera dahi mama! Lane nai, lane nai! Tera dahi mama! Lane nai, lane nai! Mamá, oh!